Hi, it's Thursday, the 11th of June, and we're continuing to read and wonder about Mark's Gospel. And we're into chapter 12, verses 18 through 27 today. Um, and and again, I, I, I'm hoping that as I read it out loud, as I think out loud about it, that you are inspired to wonder about it a little bit as well. Um, because it's in the wonder, in the discussion, in the tension with the story, where we try to figure out what it means today. I think it, it, it's in that that we discover the Word of God. So um, I hope that word comes clear to you today. Uh, not because you agree with me, but because you, you, you wonder along with me. You may recall that Jesus um, came into Jerusalem, looked around, went home, came back, knocked over the tables, um, got everybody upset, came back, and, and, and now religious officials uh, have been trying to uh, discredit him. Uh, try to catch him out, and uh, Jesus has been thus far too clever for them, um, <clears throat> bobbing and weaving verbally, and basically beating them at their own game, and uh, and that continues now. So we've we've had we've had Pharisees, um, and we've had we've had scribes, um, and and so now we have some Sadducees. So that's where we pick it up. We're in the midst of this this game almost some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and asked him a question saying teacher Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies leaving a wife but no child the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother there were seven brothers the first married and when he died left no children the second married the widow and died leaving no children and third likewise None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. And Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. So there we go. Sadducees who generally did not believe in a, in a resurrection or a life after death, um, yeah, Jewish um, belief at that time differed um, from, from group to group, sect to sect. Um, it wasn't sort of universally believed that there was life beyond this life for, for everyone or even for anyone. Um, uh, the Sadducees were one of the groups that didn't believe. Um, the Essenes did. Um, Pharisees did to some degree. Um, at any rate, the Sadducees, they don't. So so they're out to, not so much to catch Jesus, I think, as to catch him on the whole idea of, of a resurrection. Um, so, I mean, when I read it there, I read it with a little bit of a smirk, I suppose, because I assumed that there was. You know, they, they, they bring um, the law, okay, the Torah. Moses wrote to us, and, 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 they, and they describe what was the, um, the understanding at the time, that if, if a man... Uh, if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, then the man should marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. The, again, the idea that we should be uh, fruitful and multiply within our families even. so, And also to make sure that, um, that nobody is left out. So, so uh, a widow uh, with no children, a widow with no husband, had uh, very little public support, um, no no identity, in fact, or, or potential even to, to protect herself. And so it would seem the law of Moses is making sure that that person is protected, saying, no, 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 what, then, then you should marry her out of obligation, and, and, and she should have children. The idea being that the children may, in fact, be able to support her, take care of her. Um, so whereas Jesus, where Moses is talking uh, about um, a social safety net, as it were, a way of keeping community connected, um, 
was still not really addressing <laughs> issues of sexism, uh, but still looking at that, um, they've used that now to mock the idea of, of a resurrection. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because I've actually had this question asked of me uh, by children uh, more than once. Uh, a funeral for um, for for a lovely uh, um, uh, old man who died, um, having had two wives, both of who were dead, and children asking me, "When Grandpa goes to heaven, will he be with Grandma or will he be with the other lady?" That I don't know because she's not my grandma, you know. Uh, and 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 so I, I recognize that question coming from a child who wants to understand uh, what we don't fully understand. Um, but these are Sadducees, and they're mostly just trying to, to mock this idea. And so Jesus meets that argument um, and, and, and basically says, and I like this, this is the reason you're wrong. Um, you don't know the scriptures, nor do you understand the power of God. And he refers to that moment when, when God speaks through the burning bush to Moses uh, and says that I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, saying... And Jesus says, because God is not a God of the dead. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive to God. Therefore, we too would be alive to God after death. So um, that is, is, is interesting. At the time, you did have um, gods of the dead and gods of the living, but, but that's not who who Yahweh is, the God of Moses, the God of, 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 of Jesus. Our God is a God of, of the living and the dead, and therefore there are really no dead to God. We are all alive with God. For Jesus, that's obvious, and they are not seeing it. Great. So if you, are, you and you or me, we're, we're, we're wondering about um, who is Grandpa married to in, in, in heaven, um, this might be a relevant question. But for those of us who are not questioning that right now, what is this saying to us? What is this saying to you and to me? And, and, and right now what leaps out for me is, is this idea that in questioning the resurrection, um, the Sadducees and those who would be cheering them on um, are trying to hold on to the way things are. I get it in a five-year-old who wants his grandpa to be happy the way he's always seen his grandpa happy. So he wants to imagine an afterlife that will be exactly the same as this life, because that's how he knows his grandpa is happy. But why would we insist and demand that an afterlife, a life beyond this life, be exactly like this one? Except that we don't. We let go of the things that we don't like and hang on to things we do. So I've heard people say, well, in the afterlife, I'll be in my best body. Um, okay. <laughs> so you can't be, I don't know, uh, unfit in the, in, the, in the afterlife? Is that, is that what you're saying? Uh, I'll get to see all my favorite people. It'll be great. I'll get to see and hear Louis Armstrong. And I'll get to eat from great French chefs. And I'll get to see my grandma... Um, Okay, but you're not going to have to then hang out with the bad guys, I suppose. And you're not going to have to listen to any bad music. Uh, it's funny that we, 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 we shape this afterlife as being all about us, all for us, the way we like it. And you can start to understand how heaven or this life beyond life has been offered to us for generations uh, as, um, as a reward be good in this life. Put up with garbage in this life. Uh, hold your breath and just get through it. And when you get to heaven, you get everything you want. But that's not what's promised by Jesus. That's not what's promised at all in Scripture. This idea that you are going to get your personal reward, all the things that you want. What the promise is, is that there is life beyond this life, that it doesn't over here. In fact, um, our, our journey, in a sense, continues. I personally um, believe that life beyond this life is, is that opportunity for forgiveness, for fullness that I don't achieve in this life. So there is a continuation for me of 
in my mind of growth. But that's just in my mind. What Jesus basically says to them is, <laughs> they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Um, I don't know that that means we're supposed to have wings. Um, uh, and let's talk about angel wings one day from scripture. Very different. But, but the idea is that the conventions that we have here, the way that we see things in this life, do not necessarily hold in an afterlife. There is some sense of our discrete identity. That is to say that Norman is Norman. But other than that, what we're being invited to do is to trust God that it is good, that it is nothing to be afraid of. Um, not that we have to rush toward it as a reward, but we can anticipate that we are not alone in this life beyond this life and that we again have the potential for, for growth. It, it, it continues. But I might just be me. But I do recognize that desire to have things um, the way I like them. And uh, just basically uh, my reward in anything is to have more of my things. Um, I don't care about your things or anybody else's things. I want more of my things my way. And I think that the other thing that, that I think pops up that might be relevant to, to today, um, the, the silliness in a sense of the question. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. You believe in a resurrection. That's fine. But you know, <laughs> you know, what if a woman died having been married to seven different brothers and never having any kids? Okay. That's kind of ridiculous. I, if I was Jesus, I simply would have said, well, so, so tell me about that person. Where, where are they? When have they lived? Where have they lived? I, I'd like to know about that person. You, you seem to be asking me about a ridiculous thing. When in fact, what I want you to focus on is there is life beyond this life. There is ongoing responsibility and relationship with God beyond this life. That's what I want you to focus on. And instead, you're focusing on this imaginary moment of a woman who's been married to seven brothers and never had children. Are you focusing on the right thing? And I say that because... Um, my colleagues and I, my friends and I, um, and you kind of can guess which way our politics lean. Boy, oh boy, did we make a big deal of, of, of Donald Trump uh, and his photo op holding the Bible upside down. As if that's the most important thing going on right now. He held it upside down. <laughs> that's what's bothering you right now? In, in, in the midst of... of, of um, uh, of 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 protest and uprising and acknowledgement of systemic racism that I've never actually seen to this degree um, in my adult life. Hearing that, seeing that, what we're doing is <laughs> they held the Bible upside down. If Jesus were here, I honestly think he would go. I'm I'm sorry. Are you not paying attention? Do you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? Because what's happening over there, that's not what I'm talking about. And that's not what's important. What's important right now is what's happening in your heart. What's happening in the streets. What's happening in the world. When you focus on the silly little things, the details, what you get is a, a an easy victory. Like the Sadducees think they're going to get here. Uh, they're going to trip Jesus up. They get a... They get a a simple victory and they can smugly go back to their homes and go, ha, 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 see, we made him look stupid. He doesn't understand. He's holding the Bible upside down. But in fact, there's a much bigger issue. And so I often uh, wonder whether I'm getting um, pulled into the little issues because then I can sort of feel like I win instead of being part of the larger issue that I don't know if I'm going to win and I don't know if I can contribute. And I, and when I don't know if I can contribute and, and when I say I don't know if we're going to get to where we need to go, I am forgetting both the scriptures and the power of God. The Sadducees truly care about the people. If they truly care about themselves. If they care about the relationship with God. It's not about these little things that they try to imagine, but in fact... It's about what God is saying right here and right now. 
And in this story, what God is saying right here and right now is Jesus. In 2020, right now, here from where I sit nearby Toronto, what is God saying right now? That's the real question. And I, I think I know what God is saying right here, right now. At least I think I know what God is saying to me. The question is, what is God saying to you right here and right now? I don't know. Maybe. I'm just wondering a little further than I should. But that's where my mind goes right now when I hear this little passage. So I'm going to commend this passage to you to wonder about it, to think about it. And yes, have some fun with the, yeah, but what if he did this? But ask yourself, what is God saying right here and right now to you, to us? Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the mysteries of our faith, the mysteries of our life, even when they confound us. We ask for the trust and the love to let go of our need for every answer and to trust in you to lead us forward. God, let us never imagine ourselves incapable. Let us never imagine ourselves alone. Let us remember always that we are with you and with you. All things are possible. Every effort matters. God, let us open our ears, our eyes, our hearts wide that we might hear what you are saying to us right here and right now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So friends, with that, I will ask you to please stay safe. Take care of yourself. Love somebody. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.